Climate change and corruption have a lot of common points. The first thing is that both hit the poor, hit the most vulnerable, the hardest. The second thing is that both can kill, and can kill a lot of people. Basically, corruption will deter investment. And deterring investment at the moment when we need to scale up effort is something very serious. And it's not all. Corruption also affects the effectiveness of public policies, our most powerful instrument to protect people. For example, you can come with the nicest possible land zoning policy to make sure that people do not settle in flood-prone areas, are not put in arms ways, but uh, if because of corruption, a developer can still get a, a license, a permit, you will end up with a lot of people who will basically maybe suffer grave casualties uh, at the next uh, flood. Another thing about uh, corruption is that it uh, affects the quality of the design of the construction and the operation and maintenance of uh, infrastructure. Your infrastructure, if it's supposed to, uh, for example, include uh, a certain type of reinforcement that disappear magically during, uh, during the uh, preparation process, uh, will not uh, serve the duty of care that is supposed uh, to be. The corruption basically uh, makes it next to impossible for us to learn. It will be very difficult to understand what has gone wrong, what has gone right, if uh, you have a major problem of integrity. I think for, for civil society, there is a role to play there, I would say first in terms of improving the uh, access to information um, about the projects, but it's also about, you know, the, the, the topics and how do we learn from, from, from the projects, from the experience that we have. So make sure civil society uh, can and is participating, um, you know, in at, at the different level. And I think there again, to, to talk about this top, there has been a good move towards, you know, realizing and recognizing and the role of, of indigenous peoples. I'm a firm believer in being a pracademic. And the, the trick is, do you become an activist? And I think some scientists are now saying we need to become more activated. So I'm still an academic. I still want to do good science so that it's robust and can really be taken as credible and um, you know noteworthy. But I also want to make a difference as I'm going along. The most important thing really is to connect with the beneficiaries. And that's why we um, our intention is to engage with community-based civil society groups. It is those groups who actually have their feet on the ground, who see the impacts and who see the, the, um, the challenges and the risks of, of integrity failures. We're looking to uh, build those bridges of communication to expand and to reach out. Let's, let's engage and see how we can better create these partnerships, not only with institutions, but also with um, you, the people who we work for. Uh, it's really important to have uh, our, our point of view practice policy, not only uh, is the, a definition or a zero tolerance uh, recognition, but it states the responsibility of each of the areas that contribute to the life cycle of the project. We have a responsibility for integrity, due diligence and awareness to take place. And each of the uh, procedures uh, are, are defined and are reviewed in order for it, um, for each person to understand which are the stages that they have to take. GCF has put in place a zero policy for prohibited practices and engage all stakeholders in the implementation of this policy. We have an extremely strong integrity policy to ensure that every single staff in GCF epitomize the values that we want and epitomize the fights against corruption. The provisions and the mechanisms that the fund has established ensure that we're able to safeguard the resources that are entrusted to us. And in doing so, the Green Climate Fund will ultimately achieve its ambition and ensure that the most vulnerable people in the world are saved from the effects of climate change.